patient has an unaided 6x6 vision for distance and an N6 for near and yet is unhappy. Is it that the patient is fussy or is it a failure on our side to deliver? It is not surprising that following a multifocal, bifocal or trifocal diffractive IOL, patient who gets a 6x6 vision for distance and N6 for near yet seems to be dissatisfied with the postoperative outcome. We generally term such patients as simply fussy. But the truth may be far from this. Stay with me while we navigate through some important facts. A pre-presbyopic emetrope or a presbyope who constantly wears his progressive spectacles has the luxury of viewing objects across all distances and at all levels of ambient lighting conditions with 100% transmission of light energy emanating from that object through the entrance pupil. While a patient who has received a diffractive bifocal or trifocal design IOL receives at an average only 40% of this light energy transmitted. Why does this happen? When a wavefront of light hits a diffractive kyniform, three things happen to it. It gets split, bent and partitioned. The split occurs in zero order rays, first order rays and second order rays, while the bending also occurs so that the zero order rays don't bend, they carry on undeviated and are used to focus for distance. The first order rays are bent and this depends on the width of the ridges or how close or tightly packed they are. The narrower the width, the more the bending. This will focus on the near focal point and provides the near vision. Second order rays are bent to twice the virgins of the first order. They focus too close to the IOL and are not utilized in a bifocal type of diffractive IOL. The partition of light to go to the distance or near focus will depend on the height of the diffractive ridges. The height of the ridges are governed by the fovea sensitive wavelength of light which is about 550 nanometers. If the height of the ridges are set at half the wavelength of light then the zero order rays which are 40% will go undeviated onto the distant foci. The first order rays are 40% and go to the near focus while the second order rays which are 4% focus too close to be useful and the rest of the 16% of the light energy is simply lost as scatter. A trifocal diffractive IOL has two kyniforms fused together to cater to distance, near and intermediate vision. The intermediate add is half the near add and hence the second order rays from the intermediate kyniform will reinforce and strengthen the near focus. This leads to an additional 4% of light energy utilization in a trifocal design. For example, if the intermediate add is 1.75 and the near add is 3.5 diopters, the second order rays from the intermediate kyniform will have a virgins of 3.5 diopters which will strengthen the near focus. In addition, the multiple points of foci 2 or 3 will induce blur circles at the point of focus due to the unfocused rays of the other foci. This will lead to halos and glare. The rays that strike the diffractive rings at an angle and are not coaxial will also induce higher order aberrations like coma and trefoil which can cause ghosting and starburst. These higher order aberrations are rather less if the cord mu or the chang bearing cord length is less than 0.6 mm. Cord mu is the two dimensional distance between the midpoint of the pupil and the Hirschberg's reflex on the corneal surface. This can be measured by the IOL Master 700 and the eye trace machine. Therefore, by virtue of their intrinsic design, Diffractive IOLs like the bifocal or trifocal IOLs will cause to a lesser or greater extent reduction in brightness, drop in contrast sensitivity, some degrees of halo, glare and starburst while at the same time providing multifocality. This is apparently the trade-off. The question therefore is not why patients are unhappy with a 6x6 for distance and N6 for near in the Snellen's Acuity chart. But why most patients are indeed satisfied with the trifocal and bifocal performance and many would actually recommend the procedure to a friend. The reason for this are many. Firstly, the human retina can adjust to a wide range of brightness variation as seen when we perform dark adapted perimetry. A small drop in contrast can be appreciated only when the eye compares a low contrast to a high contrast image. When presented without this comparison, the eye accepts and adapts to this level of contrast. But the most important reason is this. The presence of a cataract. Even a small amount of cataract will cause moderate to severe disruption in contrast and brightness. It will induce several higher order aberrations and can induce halos, glare, starburst, monocular diplopia and polyopia. This is far in excess to any visual disturbance induced by the multifocal intraocular lenses.
Hence, if you operate only on patients with visually significant cataracts, then you are most likely to end up with happy patients. The trouble will arise when you are knocking out clear lenses for presbyopic lens exchange in patients who are constantly wearing the refractive correction. These patients will notice the visual disturbances. In this group of patients, it is better to opt for an extended depth of focus IOLs which bend, shift and stretches the wavefront without splitting it, allowing close to 90% of light energy to be focused and utilized. Since there is no splitting of light, photic phenomena are minimal or non-existent. The use of a micromonovision of 0.751 diopter with a dominant eye focus for distance and a non-dominant eye focused at near will do the trick in most cases. The importance of proper counseling cannot be overemphasized. Let the patient know what they are compromising to gain spectacle independence. And are they ready to accept this trade-off? Assess the lifestyle of the patient and at what distance much of their work and life space revolves around. 80% of individuals need intermediate vision to perform the day-to-day -day tasks. Avoid type A personalities who expect perfection because no IOL available today can provide that. Counsel the patients with their close relatives present at the session like their son or daughter as many times it is they who are more aggressive than the patient. Make sure the counseling session is videotaped and consent forms with all explanation duly signed before taking up the patient for surgery. And finally, do a proper post-op evaluation of the visual performance of the IOL so that you understand how the premium IOL is performing. Some surgeons trust the words of peers, which is partially acceptable. Many believe pharma promises, which is totally unacceptable in my opinion. A proper post-op visual assessment of premium IOL performance would include the following. A Snellen's visual acuity for distance and near, contrast sensitivity testing for at least distance intermediate and near, a monocular and binocular defocus curve which is easy to plot showing the visual performances at varying distances and a well-worded questionnaire assessing photic phenomena that the patient encounters. Contrast sensitivity testing. If you don't have a peliropsin chart, you can still use this chart which is present in most cabinet type of vision drums. It has 612 optotype triplets presented at varying levels of contrast from 100% to 5%. If a patient can see at 10% contrast or less, he has good contrast sensitivity. Most multifocal IOLs have 40 to 25% contrast levels and EDOF lens patients can see at 25 to 10% contrast levels. Perform monocular and binocular defocus curve. It's easy to construct. We have discussed this in a previous presentation. This will show us how well the patient sees at varying distances from infinity of 6 meters to as close as 25 centimeters. At each of these distances, I also check the contrast sensitivity levels. This patient with a diffractive bifocal intraocular lens has a 6.6 and N6 visual acuity but was simply unhappy because of a compromised intermediate vision as most of her work was at this distance. Now this patient who had an extended depth of focus IOL implanted had a Snellen's acuity of 6.6 and N8 only but was overjoyed as the intermediate vision was excellent. Thus understanding IOL performance will truly empower you to suggest the correct type of lens to the correct type of patient and although unhappy patients cannot be completely avoided, you could really reduce these patients to a bare minimum. Thank you for your attention.